Hello, I'm Maruk Said, your microbiology guide. Let's explore in-depth micro techniques and uncover groundbreaking insights together on this educational journey into the fascinating realms of microbes. Our DNA is stored deep within the cell's nucleus. DNA is made up of genes, and each gene is essentially a specific section of DNA that encodes a protein. Genes are converted into proteins through two steps, transcription and translation. Transcription is the initial stage in protein synthesis, in which a specific gene is read and transcribed onto an individual mRNA, or messenger RNA molecule, which functions as a blueprint with instructions on what protein to produce. Now, DNA contains two strands that wrap around each other to form the distinctive double helix. Each strand of DNA is made up of four different nucleotides, which are the individual letters or building blocks of DNA. DNA nucleotides are composed of a sugar, deoxyribose, a phosphate, and one of the four nucleobases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, or thymine, often known as A, C, G, and T, to form double-stranded DNA. The nucleotides on one strand form hydrogen bonds with the nucleotides on the opposite strand. A binds with T and C bonds with G, thus the name complementary bases. With these two strands, one is referred to as the coding strand, or the sense strand, and the other as the template strand, or the antisense strand. The coding strand contains a nucleotide sequence that acts as the protein's master blueprint. It's one of those situations when you receive exactly what you see. In contrast, the template strand has a nucleotide sequence that is complementary to that of the coding strand. In addition, the two DNA strands have a direction. The coding strand goes from the five prime end to the three prime end, whereas the template strand extends from the 3' prime to the 5' prime end. Assuming the coding strand looks like this, 5' prime end A, A, T, C, C, A, G, T, A, 3' prime end, the template strand will seem like this, 3' prime end T, T, A, G, G, T, C, A, T, prime end 5. Now, transcription begins with the unpacking of DNA from chromatin and dehelicization, which means that the double helix unwinds slightly, exposing individual genes. A gene's starting point is defined by a promoter region, which is a repeating non-coding sequence of nucleotides. For example, T, A, T, A, T, A, T. A sequence is one well-known promoter called the TADA box, which indicates where to start transcribing. A few hundred proteins and enzymes create a pre-initiation complex surrounding the promoter, which also includes the enzyme RNA polymerase. Then, a process termed elongation begins, in which RNA polymerase unzips the two strands by shearing the hydrogen bonds between the complementary nucleotides over a length of around 14 base pairs. This open space within the RNA polymerase is known as the transcription bubble. The RNA polymerase follows the template strand and utilizes it to create an mRNA molecule, which is a mirror image of the template strand. Now, mRNA differs slightly from DNA. First and foremost, it employs a slightly different set of nucleotides, with the T substituted by uracil or U. The U will generally pair with A, much as T would. Also, mRNA flows in the opposite direction as the template strand, from the 5' prime end to the 3' prime end. So, while reading the template strand, RNA polymerase will travel from the 3' prime end to the 5' prime end, while producing the mRNA molecule in the opposite direction, from the 5' prime end to the 3' prime end, RNA polymerase assembles mRNA by linking complementary nucleotides. For example, if we make a protein based on our previous coding strand, the template strand appears like this. Then the mRNA will seem like this. For reference, the code strand will look like this. 
a startling resemblance. As RNA polymerase moves down the DNA, hydrogen bonds between previously transcribed nucleotides rejoin, zipping the DNA back together. RNA polymerase eventually reaches a certain sequence known as the terminator. The terminator sequence consists of two complementary sequences in a row on a single strand. When they are translated into mRNA, the newly generated sequences bind with each other, forming a hairpin loop, which causes the RNA polymerase to detach from the DNA strand by simply pulling it off. This results in transcription termination, which occurs when mRNA detaches from the enzyme, DNA closes, and RNA polymerase moves on to transcribe another gene. However, the mRNA is still incomplete and has to be modified. For example, a 7-methylguanosine cap is added to the 5 end of RNA, similar to a nucleotide cap, and at the 3 end, the enzyme polyadenylate polymerase adds a polyadenine tail, which is a lengthy sequence of solely adenine nucleotides. Think of them as the plastic pieces on shoelace ends. Their role is to strengthen the mRNA. However, the narrative is not done since the mRNA still has to be edited. mRNA is separated into exons and introns. Exons code for the protein, whilst introns do not. So, to remove the unneeded pieces, a molecular machine called the spliceosome enters and splices the introns out. This is similar to video editing, where you delete content from the original footage to create a much cleaner final cut. Finally, we have a sequence of exons with a cap and a polyadenine tail that may be used to code for proteins. The newly synthesized mRNA floats out of the nucleus and associates with an idle ribosome in the cytoplasm where it may produce a protein. If you have watched till here, don't forget to subscribe to Family of Science Lovers. Press the bell icon button so you are always updated. Summary. Okay, just a brief summary. The DNA is made up of genes, which may be transformed into mRNA protein blueprints via transcription. The promoter marks the beginning of the gene. The RNA polymerase attaches to it and begins to assemble mRNA from it. Finally, the mRNA detaches and moves outside of the nucleus.